Aloha mai kako. We'd like to begin today by just setting the stage and taking us first to the reason that we're here, taking us all to Mauna Awakea. And it's been a dream for us for years now that we could extend a tribute in gratitude and honor to really the students the staff and the faculty of UH Manoa that have stood with us, inspired us, and honored us in the stance for Mauna Kea. So what we have here today is the Mauna has been brought from the four cardinal points, four displays, Nakukulu Eha, four cardinal points. So what we'd like to start with is by asking those who have contributed to this project, to this really heartfelt tribute and event here today to please come up with us. So Alex, I see you, Sarah, all of you who are a part of this, whose hands have touched even one piece who sat in a planning committee meeting with us even one time, who are responsible for your display locations today and every day until we take down the display and hopefully put it somewhere else on campus. Could you come up please so that we can welcome everybody together? And we said, you know what, if it's 10 people today, if it's 50 people today, never mind, the Mauna is here today, and that is our guest of honor. So we are here. Really to honor those who are here, those who aren't here, those who are on their way today. It's a big day for us. We're here from one till six o'clock, you know. I know, right? Yeah, when we, you know, when we go hard, we really go hard. So from one to two-ish, it's great music, great food, a welcome to anyone who enters here now and later, that we let you know how much this means to us and we know to the kupuna of this place and we know to the kia'i who have stood and will stand after us right here from this area, this moku. So we're going to be here from one to a hard two-ish and then we're going to, everybody will go to either all locations or one or two locations. This is quite a walk. I felt from Hamilton Library to here, I went walk from Hilo to Kona, you know? <laughs> but that's what it is. So from 2 to 2.30-ish to 4, you are welcome to go to any of the locations where there is a display. And we'll let you know before you set off where those are. And then we're going to gather near Native Hawaiian Student Services, I guess you call that the Varney Circle area. We're gonna gather there, we'll give you some updates on the Mauna if you're joining us there, and we will close with the Aha Mauna at five o'clock, which is the time that some can only come for. So that's our full day today because the Mauna has been so immense in our lives as a unifier and a beacon and that's what the chant that Lanakila and I just did is all about. It says, He pala mauna awa kea iluna. Mauna kea seals us all together, not just on our island, not just in this pai aina, but throughout the Pacific and then even farther throughout the world. It is our unifier and beacon, and so how can we not stand for the Mauna? So here we are today, and I'm just going to, I'm gonna turn around and 
Pai Pai Kalima for all of these guys who are standing here right now. So let's give them a big hand and then you guys can sit down. Wow, can somebody take our picture before we go further? Because this is like, come close, you guys. This is so beautiful to see all of us together. This is what it took, and more of us, to come together to do what you're going to witness today at these locations. So, yeah, we got to do one photo first because we might not be in the same spot, you know, again here. Yeah, yeah. Close, close up, up, close up, close up. Uh, close up. Yeah. Close up, close up. If you have to hug the person next to you, hug them too. Close up, close up, close up. Okay. so that at any time, and you can call your friends, we get food. You see somebody on campus, hey, today you come and be our guest because we're celebrating bringing Mauna Kea to Manoa. So we're gonna pull it for our food and then please, we're gonna have wonderful music and great food and just be with us as long as you can and wish to. And, and we'll just be on a free flow until a hard two-ish. Ekea kua, ina ohana o mako, eia ka ai, pili me ke aloha. Eia ka ai, pili me ka mana. O ke aka ka oko, o ka i o tamato. E o la loa ke kino, e o la loa ka ohana. Ah, mama, Ua no. if we are fed and healthy, so will our families be. Eo. I'm going to have Eric come up so you can sit for a minute. We're just going to do an introduction, and then, um, then you can just feel free to eat. And I'll have each person from their... Uh, location come up in a little bit and explain their own uh, display location because each of these exhibits are very different so you want to make sure you see them all. Mahalo, mahalo nui Antipua uh, and aloha mai kako. My name is Eric Chang. Uh, I work at the East West Center and it's been a real honor and privilege to be part of this uh, support team. And uh, I, I just uh, want to take a minute to share that uh, the activities here in support of the Mauna in 2019 really woke me up uh, as, a, as a new settler here in Hawaii. And, um, and thanks to Lana Kila for providing so much leadership um, for those activities here and uh, it's really changed my trajectory uh, in my work uh, and in my life. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's such an honor to, to work with you, Antipua, and, and to support uh, this and so many other causes uh, in Resonance. Mahalo. So we have uh, some great music to share with you folks today. Uh, <coughs> starting with uh, Iku Olono, Buddy Jackson, who's uh, all of 16, 16? 16 years old. Uh, uh, Buddy's parents um, founded Ho'ula Aina in Kulihi Valley. And so he is a monkey eye himself. Um, and we pulled him out of some, some school activities today to come share with you. Uh, and so mahalo, Buddy, for, for coming uh, to share some music. Uh, please give him a, a warm hand. Mahalo.
please feel free to go eat at any time. Okay, just, just do it whenever you feel it. Ula 
Give it up one more time for Buddy Jackson. And now, all the way from the island of Rotuma, Skills and JJ Talkeve. We acknowledge the traditional owners of this land that we gather here today and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging as they hold hope for all indigenous people. Now before we uh, sing our first song, I want you to turn to the person beside you, give them a high five and tell them you look gorgeous today. Absolutely gorgeous.
Thank you. This next song is for everyone that was clapping. If you were clapping, thank you for clapping. If you haven't clapped yet, you can clap after the next few songs. <clears throat> This next song is for anyone here with long hair. If you have long hair, this one is for you. Anywhere. If you have long hair, anywhere. Thank you. 
to love me You are everything to me From the mountains to the sea So this next song is titled Climate Change. <clears throat> We're going to play it on the scale of A minor. Those of you who play music will know what scale we're playing it on. <laughs> if you don't know what scale we're playing it on, that's still okay. We'll keep going ahead with the song. So this song was written in the year 2019 before uh, one of our trips to the climate change event that happened in Madrid, Spain. I'd like to dedicate this song to anyone here wearing something black. If you're wearing something black, this one is for you. Oh, ah, eh, ah, hey, hey. Let me 
change. We have a simple mission to pass on all our island ways. Born and raised and how to treat each other with respect. We are the first generation to win poverty. Now that's a fact. Really now, bro. We still got close family struggling so hard. The life they're living is so saddening. Experimental procedures still happening. To see a carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can be so damaging. The biggest issue, yeah, this is the biggest issue, yeah. Open up your social media to see the upset. We all have a burden that we carry substantially. We all need a new way now, we're thinking for humanity. People need to stop financial denial of climate change. Future generations are at risk, your very own kids and grandkids. Those of whom you want the very best for, unless you regulate and demonstrate the way to move forward. From all of the sea, we're sifting slowly to the ocean. The commotion that's building upon the sea will always go on. All the pediatry of naturally geographical sea rise, king tides, and so on and so forth. We are at the forefront of this super global mass strike. That's right, evidence migration from the last fight. Cultures running for their dear life, so you can all imagine they keep going up the history. See, this is you and me. What we want to do is a reflection of the future. See, the hell is Upon a federal situation critical, I don't trust the chemical, keeping it traditional, plastic the minimal, see me got the visual and clean and spiritual. What we got to do is a reflection of the future scene. Le, le, la, 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 la. Thank you, that was a song for climate change. This next one is another original uh, number written with our group uh, when we were back home in Fiji a couple of years back called Raku Pacifica. This one here is called Fauhis. And I'd like to dedicate it with anyone wearing spectacles or sunglasses today. If you're wearing spectacles or sunglasses today, yeah, you can see four, five, eight people this side. Oh, wow. I 
can see rainbows as clouds are thin out. Morning mist comes splashing to my face. I can feel the ocean vibe through my veins. Fall is at the quam, my moa, so up the hot water. Fall look up for the land of Santa, my moa. Yo ni kopu a sengo, pero mi tokia salvas to the islas. If I knew I could have stayed back in Manny. As the waves come rushing in, and the crews are running up and down. Well, I know this would stop me, so I covered her up. It's the good night, stood up to see. This song is uh, going to be our Hanaho song. So no more Hanaho after this song. <laughs> anyway, this is one of the uh, songs that we usually sing uh, at uh, the end of the year, in the month of uh, December, going through into January. This one is called Raota Uma Arotuma. Mayo 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Skills. It's my younger brother, JJ. Another big round of applause to our sound guys for today in the tent. Making us sound extra good to our cameraman here in this tent. Big round of applause for him as well. Brian, this is you over what resonates for me and I'm going to have someone from that site hopefully we have someone from each one here so they can speak to it so I'm going to just say Sarah get ready because I don't see Alex so I just did that side eye peripherals but one thing I will ask did you guys love that meal yes. Okay. Did you love it enough that before you leave here, you will make it a point to go into our first exhibit and sign the no construction petition on Mauna Kea, please? Can you do that? Okay, now I hope that this is on the cover, you know, because I'm not here to create the kind. On the cover, once we reach 500,000, we are taking that petition on a little world tour to say we are more than some Hawaiians and our allies. We are at least 500,000 and we are saying N-O is still no. So if you want to contribute to that, which I else you wouldn't be here, so I know that you, you would like to, it's right in there. Before you leave, okay? So, without another moment, I'm gonna, Sarah, you feel comfortable about coming up to speak about, or you want me to wait and see if Alex appears? I'm gonna wait and see if Alex appears from KTUH, because, and I'll speak just a little bit about this exhibit. If you go into this exhibit, or if you have already, and you haven't really been um, informed, about this exhibit for Alex from KTUH, who was my first contact here to Manoa. This is the exhibit display where we wanted you to feel the sacredness of Mauna Kea. This is our introductory display, which means that when you walk in that door, you're driving up Saddle Road. And when you get inside, you're at the Ahu. How many of you have been to the Ahu? Kanaka Leo Nui at Puhulhulu. <coughs> That's your first stop when you pull off into that parking lot at Puhulhulu. So when you walk in there, that's where you start. Then all those different scenes of Mauna Kea, we're taking you to the summit. Then you're gonna come down from the summit and you're going to have yourself an aha. You're going into the different cubicles there and you're gonna hear the chants 
and you're going to see them being done on the AHA, especially if you've been to one, and you can still, today at five, right out here, but that's what we're giving you. And then you come around the corner, and we let you know why it is we do what we do, why we stand. We give you the faces and the facts of why it is that from 2010 till this day, till however long it takes, we're still here. That's on that other wall. And then we don't have a crosswalk like we did in the first exhibit, but we do have a photo where you can take your picture with Kia'i who were up on the Mauna. So if you have gone in there or haven't, make sure one, you sign the petition. Two, that you take a photo in there because standing in the, on the Alahulu Kupuna, on the Mauna Kea Access Road, our courageous Aloha Aina, Kia and Kukulu, who stood that day in particular, along with thousands who have st stood over many years. So that's exhibit number one. Exhibit two, and we have a lay for each exhibit because that's how we open every exhibit. We are on our 18th. Exhibit two, I'm gonna call Jamie. Is Jamie here? Yeah, Jamie, why don't you tell them about your exhibit? Yes, and bring up, oh yes, Meliana. Please. Aloha, everyone. Um, I'm gonna bring up Mele and to Meliana Meyer. <laughs> You're going to talk first, girl. Yeah. Go for it. And I also want to bring up all of my students who helped on this project with me. Can you all come up, please? Yeah. 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 So the, the, the site of the Art Commons Gallery features three community projects, two community sculptures, one of quilted, uh, a quilted flag, and the other one in paper aku. And then it also features um, Meliana Meyer's amazing film that activates, um, I think, both sculptures in a really beautiful way, uh, Sacred Mountain, Sacred Conduct. And Meli was really kind enough to work on this project with me. Um, the, the pieces that are featured in the Commons Gallery are all about um, allyship. They're all about how we build solidarity through creativity and learning together. Uh, and so working with Meliana Meyer on this project over the course of the semester with three of my classes, 50 students total, um, the graduate students helping me and Meliana with the undergraduate students manifest this project was just an amazing, oh, that's Thank much better. Well. Thank you. Um, what was an amazing uh, adventure, and uh, and I'm really honored to have done it with all of you. So thank you. Um, so I wanted Melly to maybe say a few things about. You know, I first want to give, give Pua all the credit and our beloved mountain the credit. You know why? <laughs> because nothing happens without a mountain. Nothing happens without a cause. And these incredible students, we had fun. I mean, it was fun, okay? A little, a little rugged at moments because nobody knew exactly what we were doing. But you, you have to know, we all believe in our beloved mother, Earth. And Pua, God bless you. And God hold, Akua hold us all in the work we do because that's really what it's about. And we're here to do that work. And it was fun. I mean, honestly, you have to know the film was also, it, it happened because of the remarkable kokua of, of about six other groups of videographers. That does not happen in film. People usually charge you, say no, la la la, but I asked all of these beloved um, colleagues of mine and everyone said yes. So it goes to show you what we can do together. And that project is a reflection of that. So you don't get to do films unless you know, you've know you made the time and take the time to be in relationship. And that's what this has been all about, that project, and all of the work that we're trying to do in community. Pua does it um, in her work, and we all do it in our own. And 
good old Andre. How's it? <laughs> but anyway, um, I just want to brag about you all, just because anyone who's touched any of this work uh, just deserves heartfelt thanks. So we're all doing the work together. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. I look forward to you guys seeing the show because it's really cool. Mahalo, Kua. Allison, can I call you up, please? And Allison will be talking about the display that they have at Native Hawaiian Student Services. Hello, Nui Kako. Uh, o Allison. Um, I am from Kailua, Oahu. I am a Limahana um, at Native Hawaiian Student Services. I uh, um, and, and this kind of ties into our. Um, Peace at Native Hawaiian Student Services. I um, was a student here in college, not really knowing where I was going in life, not knowing really what my voice was. Um, and in 2013, um, for those of you that um, were here, might have heard of it, Haley Kaili Ehu, um, she did an art piece um, for the Kaleo Arts Festival um, back in 2013. Um, she wrote a message, really calling out the university, um, for its lack of being a Hawaiian place of learning. Um, and they painted up that, that kind of kahea that she, she put um, with her mural. Um, and from then on, I feel like the Mauna has really spoke to me, and I think for all of us here as well, um, in finding our voice and finding our voice that connects us to our lahui as well. Um, so um, I started here as a college student, graduated, um, I've been working at Native Hawaiian Student Services for almost nine years now, full time. Um, but throughout those years, um, I've really seen our space grow in student advocacy, um, really trying to support students that want to have a voice, um, especially around the Mauna. So our um, pieces um, acknowledge or share a little bit about the 2013 Kaleo Arts Festival um, mural with Haley Kaili Ehu. Um, the, the use of um, silk screen printing as a form of art and resistance. Um, so Native Hawaiian Student Services has always supported um, students that have wanted to create designs around, um, around everything, but around the Mauna. Um, so we have a few art pieces, a few of our original screen prints um, in, the, um, in the window. Um, we have one on Puhuluhulu University that was started by a student here at um, UH Manoa, Presley Abuk Sang. Um, she did a piece um, for us as well. And then uh, Kaipu Baker and Hina Keala, they did a piece around Kiaike Kahokani. So students that created their own um, hui of students um, that really in 2019, I think, kind of built or continued to build on that kahua and that foundation um, for student voices. Um, around Mauna Kea. So um, I hope you guys get to come and check out our pieces. Oh, and, and last thing, we also have, um, if you folks were here in 2019, um, they had the names of our kupuna that were on Mauna Kea. They uh, painted each sign for those kupuna. So we put that in our window as well. That's actually holding up our posters. Um, and we've seen that as they're kind of still uplifting us. Um, today. So hope you guys get to check, um, check out our piece. It's going to be in the window so you folks can literally go 6 o'clock in the morning if you want to 6 o'clock at night. So mahalo nui. Aloha. I'm going to follow that by saying um, that mural by Haley Kaili Ehu. In 2013, we had just lost our first contested case hearing. And we were a little lost about what we were gonna do next. And I know for myself, I was feeling exhausted because if you've ever been in a contested case hearing, that's what it does to you. It's meant to just take you under 10 buses. However, one night while I was really feeling it, like I was tired, I had a phone call and I didn't know the person that was on the line and said, Auntie, no worry. Tomorrow try watch the news. We're going to do this so that you can still stand. And I didn't know what 
this person was talking about or who this person was, but the next day, the mural was up. And I get really emotional about it because it was a real shift for me back into like, you know, standing again, fully invigorated by what was happening on this campus. And it was Haley telling me that she was gonna be there for me through this mural and we were gonna be able to keep moving forward. And I have never forgotten that. And that's why I'm standing here today, was because of that first phone call that I had in 2013. And it took me all this time and a great, great many others to bring the 18th exhibit here to this campus. And that's why, because no matter how long it takes, at some point, it's a full circle tribute and gratitude to who pulled you up when you needed, you know, when you needed that the most. So I credit this space, those students, faculty, and staff then, and those here now, and those to come. Keep pulling us along because we got a long way to go. So thank you, thank you so much for that. That's that's a huge moment for me personally. And um, lastly. We're, we're inviting you to the Hamilton Library. And I'm gonna, I know that everybody came up already, but I really wanna bring those who helped me Thursday and Friday of last week, just Thursday and Friday, so when you come to Hamilton, you're just gonna say, wow, just Thursday and Friday, yes, and here we are again. So can you come up if you were there any time Thursday and Friday, please? Because when people come visit, I want them to know that you contributed to this. So the Hamilton, yeah. <laughs> Hamilton Library, what you're gonna see in there are actual creations through photography and artists who were so inspired by Mauna Kea and really not just from Hawaii but from the Pacific and also from the continent with native people, indigenous people and from so-called Canada. We have pieces that were gifted to us all inspired by the Mauna. And we also are gonna show you some ceremony in there. When you come in, you're gonna be in ceremony, and then you're going to see these gifts that are song, chant, dance, and treasured pieces. So we hope that you come by, if not today, because like I said, it's quite the hike. You really gotta like commit. So maybe today your commitment is you going here, and then maybe you going um, Native Hawaiian Student Services and the Art Commons building, maybe that's what you're gonna do and then gonna be time for the AHA. Or you're going all the way over there. But before I let them sit down, I'm gonna call Eric up and I do want to um, also mention, very important, the partnership between us and them. And I'm gonna let them speak to that. But without them, couldn't have gone, I think, as far as we did. Their expertise and their willingness to be a team partner in this, even though it's not a Kukulu exhibit, they have an exhibit of their own that is just partnered and complementary and in alignment with ours, so. Well, I didn't expect to uh be up here for this, but thank you so much, Auntie Pua. Um, yeah, Annie uh, is the curator at, at East West Center, the gallery and ex uh, exhibitions and the collection there. And um, uh, I'm the manager of the arts program. So when we heard about this idea for the Kukulu exhibits at UH Manoa, it was a really exciting opportunity. Um, and we got super excited about having it at our gallery um, and activating that space. You know, institutions are, are interesting creatures um, and they're not always ready for uh, certain things at certain times. And it's, it can be really frustrating. Um, institutions move slowly, uh, always. And uh, 
it's like this glacial pace. And maybe it's, it's on, you know, the, that arc of justice, but it's hard to feel sometimes um, if, you know, it's, if, you can't, if you can't see it, you know, every day, that forward motion. Um, and so we have this other exhibit up. This is in, um, in partnership with uh, Kapapaloi Loi Kanevai. Um, we learned so much from uh, Uncle Makiapo Cashman, um, P Pili Aloha, his daughter. Um, so it's this beautiful tribute to uh, the Loi here. Um, what it took to um, reestablish that area uh, reclaim that land and water, um, and what associations that has to um, those efforts across across Hawaii. Uh, and so we're happy to have that exhibition in alignment and still be on this team, be part of this hui to um, to stand up these other spaces on campus. Um, and so happy to be here with uh, some other East West Center students. JJ's here, Kenji's here, Dan's here. Um, so that we can always find these creative ways, yeah, to, um, to work together uh, and to support the things that we care about. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. I just, um, just been following what Eric said, um, we've just been very honored to support this project and to also be in alignment um, at the East West Center Gallery. There's so many connections. It's hot. We're finding more connections than disconnections, and it's been incredibly inspiring. And, um, you know, I know it's a difficult time of year. Everybody's tired, and it's been just truly uh, an honor and inspiring working with Auntie Kua Case and Uncle Makahiapo Cashman. Um, and just to know we can always work harder because there's always somebody who's carrying it forward. So, mahalo. So we start with a kalo and we end with the kalo. We start here, this is your first spot. And if you make it all the way to East West Center, which is another big commitment, you end with the kalo, so you see what, you know, just try to think about that. It all begins and ends with the kalo. So that's one of the, just, there's so many things that we could point out, but we're just gonna do that. And speaking of the kalo, I'm gonna call Lanakila up to send us on our way. And the reason, well, many reasons. Oh, hana o kamau na akea. O pu'u a e kamau na akea. Is that not all about the kalo? And if you're missing the aha, if you just went, oh, wow. Five o'clock, we get the aha. Lanakila space in Honoka'a, the Hamakua Cultural Center down in Honoka'a, was the first site of the Kukulu exhibit, the first exhibit. Exhibit number one, and this is exhibit number 18. And in 2018, nobody wanted to touch us and, and let us have an exhibit on Mauna Kea really anywhere. It was very controversial in my own community because that we happened to house the biggest astronomy headquarters, of course, in Waimea. Nobody would let me have an exhibit, much less get in the door anywhere. But Lanakila, of course, said just bring them down here. Because Hamakua is the district that the Mauna resides in. So we have tried to, in our very best intention, be Pono all the way through with these Kukulu exhibits to pay tribute to the pillars of Mauna Kea and all sacred places. If you want to exhibit somewhere, because we, we have exhibits in New York right now on the continent and on our island as well. One, we don't say no, and we have an exhibit at Nanakuli Public Library right now. We don't say no, and we say just let Mauna Kea be the center, but please honor your own people and the issues that you stand for. You know, Mauna Kea is the unifier, but it extends everywhere to every water, 
to every place, to all of the spirit bodies, just give it a place, but please make this about your space. So I just wanted Lanakila to just take us back to 2018 and the first exhibit for Kukulu at his center. Aloha <clears throat> Kako. Yeah, the first Kukulu heart exhi exhibit. <laughs> um, it was a magical time and we were very blessed to have this space in Honoka'a. Um, it was a, my a cultural center that I was able to start with our community back in. We opened our doors in 2015. Lo and behold, for many things, we became the headquarters for everything Mauna. Uh, because again, every place else is under some kind of institution. They're like, oh, we don't like, have to have it. Like, the boat. We're like, come, we rock boats over here. Uh, to have our spaces that we are allowed to rock our boats, that we don't have to ask permission. Uh, it was very important and I would say too for each community one of the beautiful things that happened during that time of our exhibit was when we let everyone know that it was there how many different peoples came all the way to Little Honoka'a yeah, to come and be there. I think about all the different kupuna and elders and visitors from around the world that heard about it and made the trek all the way to Honoka'a. You know where Honoka'a is, that's why we ain't nowhere near no airport. So it's a trek to come and see us. And many, so many did. I would say definitely we had the exhibit for about a year and probably at least two to 3,000 people had come through our exhibit all the way to Honoka'a. And the aha, the ceremonies that were conducted there, the dancers, the hula, the, the songs, the, the peoples from all around that just came and felt inspired and just gave their prayers, gave their chants, gave their dances. You know, uncle drive back, you know, the ranch is coming by, like, oh, what's going on over there? <laughs> it was amazing to see what this mound, what the Mauna was able to bring to our community. And so I, I encourage you all here at this exhibit and to all others out there too, don't ever think that your face is too small. Yeah. Um, and also continue to invite your Lahui. Bring your community. When the Mauna comes, make the opportunities, build around the opportunities that they're here. Um, and we were able to do that a lot in, in Honoka'a. We had tons of schools come and hundreds of students coming through and offering and seeing their relatives or seeing friends or seeing themselves in a picture. It's like, oh yeah, I went, oh, there, there I am. Yeah, to see that it's a living treasure that recognizes historical events of our day and age that one day will be the historical documentation that they look back on generations before when they'll be like, no way, you guys had like 1,000 people on the mountain. They're like, bruh, 7,000, yeah? In one day, yeah? Um, but the magic that we continue to build around it, it's what adds to the kukulu, the continuing to build. And it's important at this time that these exhibits continue to stand and we continue to bring all the life around the exhibit as the mountain brought so much life to us all. And so to every hand, uh, to every creative mind, to every person who would even help, oh, I see the hair, uh, yeah, even those who braved the pala pala to make these things possible. Yeah, mahalo anui loa, especially to be able to, I say, infiltrate these kinds of places. Yeah, you gotta work it in there. And I'm super, super mahalo for those of you who, who bear that responsibility and do that pala pala work um, to make it, and who stand and advocate, continue to advocate that it needs to be in these spaces, especially in a, for, in a place of education. How can you deny allowing something into a space if it is for the education and the remembrance of our people, unless you're trying to deny history? What you saying? What you saying? <laughs> yeah, but just keep pushing, just keep pushing, just keep pushing. Yeah. So, yeah, mahalo. Mahalo no iloa and may this, may the Mauna blessings continue to um, mau na, continue to perpetuate. No na kau akau. Mahalo. So, Lanakila will be here uh, for a little bit when we set off. So Jamie and her students will be at the Art Commons um, Gallery. Allison will be heading off to Native Hawaiian Student Services. I will be at Hamilton 
and you are welcome to any of these spaces. East West Center is still open, I'm assuming. So what we'd really like you to encourage, well, we'd love to encourage you, one, to sign the petition. You already know that. I don't need to say that one more time, but there it went. When you pow do that, then we'd love to see you at one or more of the exhibits. We're going to plan on coming back together by Varney Circle at Forish. And then we're, and we'll have others maybe joining us just for the AHA. But if you need a little reminder, Mauna Kea Kua Hivi Kuha, oh, you know, if you need that, He Ahala He Ku Kulu He Mauna, if you need that, you know, E Na Ho Aina, E Na Ho Velulike, E Na Ho Pili, E Na Ho Alo, Ho, 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 Aloha if you need that, five o'clock is our aha, and you're welcome to be there. So I'll see you at Hamilton if you're coming all the way there, and we'll see you wherever you land, wherever you end up. And ho'omana, be empowered. I'm empowered just by being here today because we get plenty more work to do. It's far from over. We have to remain visible. We have to be vigilant. And you better be sure we, we have to be ready at all times because they're determined to build. We must be even more determined to remain standing. So we'll see you guys wherever you go. See you on the Mauna, because wherever you go, you're gonna be at the Mauna. So we're gonna continue maybe with the Hana Ho, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you might just need to just stay here. And that's fine too, because the exhibit is up for two months. So no rush off. If you just like be uplifted with more music, they said most definitely, absolutely, they're going to be right here. So I'll see you at Hamilton if you come my way. Aloha, everybody. Thank you so much. Mauna Kea Education Awareness. Mahalo nui.
ritual of when you wake up in the morning and you actually take a look at that sun and say aloha and mahalo I hear another day. That right there, starting the day with recognition and gratitude. That's a ritual. And you get down to, you know, brush your teeth, comb your hair, I hope, get, <laughs> ow, ow, <laughs> just make clean. But to think about how the daily task of Oloi Kalima, Oloi Kaniho, O Ao Ao, to think about that in a ceremonial way. I must prepare this vessel, this sacred space, to do sacred work through the day. To take that point to, to look into the morning sun for a minute and just think about our kupuna. Think about the day before, think about the, the day current. Every day becomes ceremony. Every day becomes enriched. And then the task and everything that you do throughout that day is carrying that blessing all the way through. That's moving in the sacred way. That is the continue each day making another fiber, is making that count. So when we come into Aha, um, like we did on the Mauna, I would say each day was a whole grade. Morning, Haukala, high noon, sunset. Tree fly braid right there. Every day. Every day. A powerful memory for me. Uh, thinking back to our stand in 2019. I remember it was about maybe two or three months in when we had a good steady seven, five thousand people on the mountain every day. I was like, okay, we're kinda good at because we get plenty of people from about from out and around of our on our Lahui and beyond. Yeah, our Kanaka and our uh, and the diaspora, everyone wanted to be part and wanted to talk to them. And so when the, the remember the, the kahea was very unusual for a lot of us too. Especially when you had like Etihoku and Etihua Kanahele over there saying, go post this online so everyone can learn. You know, a school of people like, what? <laughs> like, wait, wait, like what? Like for real? Yes. I still remember that first day at Tipua Kanahele would look over at some tourists. She goes, you too. What was the thing? There's no spectators here. This is, no one is spectating. You're part of it. So get up. I still remember some of the strong, strongest memories. Yeah, we had the halals. We had those people that came and they hula. It was beautiful. But was when I saw the uncles and the aunties just get up and give them. That was more manafor and merry mana. Yeah. More than about the perfection of the art, it was the intensity and the, the mana and behind it. Yeah, that actually gave mana now even to that hula. Yeah. The hula that helped to even in, in its most rawest form, what we're doing is we're we're moving the currents. We're, we're creating uh, waves. Uh, if, if, we, if you imagine yourself in a pool and you push your hands like this, you send a little vibration out. We have a thousand of us together go like this. You send a weight. And then, so at that time, five, six, you know, a few months in, I was okay, we might cut it because I, I, we're getting requests to come. To more of our Ohana wanted to like have even more than just the YouTube support. They wanted to have grounding and aha. So I, I dedicated myself to wherever Allah Hui was and wanted, I would make myself available. And we'd grab whoever we could and we go holo. So I think in the next five months, in that 2019, I did 175 workshops across from Hawaii Moku, Puna, all the way to Kauai, all the way to Alaska, Vegas, New York, wherever our people said we want to learn. Said, okay, sometimes three, four workshops in a day. What was powerful is how then you know, we use the tools available to us. And through the social media, the time to take your Facebook, take your Instagram when you use it that way. Yeah. Um, you could see people halfway across the planet, everybody synchronized. Yeah. Everyone would, would gather. I had people telling me, yeah, my whole office building, you know when it's, when it's noon, because we hear everybody get their, get their phone out on top of the desk and you hear aha, uh -huh, all throughout the office building. People were participating and that, imagine that. That are these synchronized times now? Yes, on the Mauna we had thousands of people doing aha, but in sync with us across the planet, people were doing the pulling, people were doing the prayers, people were sending that vibration. 
So, aha. The, the intention of the aha, it is the, the, the pula, the oli, or the fiber. Or uh, I would say, actually, uh, that's the knowledge base that, that skills the hand on collecting the fiber. Each and every single one of us, we are the fiber. But it is the, it is the, the ike, the knowledge and that wisdom of knowing how to bring those fibers together that's good. and twisting it and braiding it to become the aha. That's what the pule, that's what the prayers in the pula are. So that you can have a thousand people just walk and we can just show up and that's, that's, that's strong too. But if we know how to braid that bugger in tight, oh, 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 we can make all kinds of things. So when we, when we learn about the aha, because of course in you know, what, half hour, we kind of teach you all 10 hulas. But, for those of us who do remember the bits and pieces of the hula, <laughs> we won't get up, we won't give up. And you know, the rest of you also are invited to get up and follow. Yeah? There is vaihoka hila hila, you know, just leave the shyness here because we're not here. Ain't nobody looking at you, it's not very monarch, it's not performance. Key thing, it's not a performance, period. It's not a performance. It is human. In our physical and our spiritual presence, coming together with a collective focus and setting out an intention. That's aha. Uh, and so, just wanted to share to you as we start to think about where are we today because, whew, some memories. We're actually in 2000, right now, 2024. We're hitting the 10 year mark of the first physical stand. The mountain. When, when, and you know, and people and blessed be all of those who are fighting within that court system. You know, we know that system wasn't made for us. Was designed against us. When that was not being successful, and it got to the point that they was ready to break ground. Yep. We stood on the mountain. We climbed the mountain. We walked that mountain. And even the Kohaku of the mountain spoke to us. Um, October, October 2014 was the groundbreaking attempt. Yeah. I will make a t-shirt line yes. one day. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. Like snakes. Well, I, that was one of the big, but that was only supported because of those who held down at the ahu. Yeah. Our kupuna who held the ahu right. below, those ohana that held at the visitor center, those ohana that were still holding at the fork in the road. All of that was in place to that point that you never know, or sometimes a bad thing. I bet that ranger who tried to hit me with his truck had no idea that he would spur this whole thing. Because <laughs> I probably wouldn't have the adrenaline to actually run over the mountain. He cracked me with the truck, I hit up on the hood, and you know what? Rah! I can climb the mountain. Yeah. Um, but I'm again, I was just a mouthpiece there to help speak to what all of us all the way down to the bottom of the mountain was trying to say. Yeah. But I remember one of the, the key things that we said there, and we we ritualized it. We said, pack it up, you're going home. They never believe us, so we literally started closing their chairs and stacking it up for them. Like, we will help you. You speak. Yeah. I remember that. They never believe us. Yeah. So in this time we have continued to build. That was 2014. 2015, the first machinery coming up the mountain. Some of us got the call. We ran, I ran up the mountain early, early that morning, put the call out and more of us was able to get together. And there's a number of other things, as, we, as I like to share this for Olalo, because there's all these other fibers that contributed to that. It's cool, I want to say that, it's cool to know. The call I got at 5.30 in the morning that construction equipment was coming up Mauna Kea because none of us knew. The call I got, hit, hit, 
came from an astronomer from a different telescope. So, just to think about like, what? Yeah, how's that? Some who, even those who have been on the mountain who have had their relationship have also, many, many have, in their own way have realized, we shouldn't be up here. It definitely shouldn't be anything bigger up here. So just to, to share that, that, that actually went out. Um, I got there early in the morning and climbed that mountain. The first police officer that I hit on the road, I was like, oh boy, here we go. Cool. He was like, are you the Lana Kila that taught at Waikia Elementary? I said, yeah. He said, my mo'opuna goes there. I was so proud of what I saw that you were able to teach those kids. He said, my, the machines have been dropped off right now. But he just, that was it. He just gave me his roha. See how things that have nothing to do with that. We just be pono in our communities. More of that aha. Fibers that you didn't even know you was making, being made. I get to the summit, we're dropped off already. Discussion, what are we gonna do? Maybe we gotta actually like stay here, regularly, all the time. Okay, go down for a couple days, pack up, and we go try to make some stuff. Couldn't make a couple days, because the next morning, five o'clock in the morning, I get another call. Same astronomer. They're trying to actually load the machines up right now. They put the blades on. Oh! Up the mountain again. The kii kukia imauna in hand. The video. Where is your what they cultural monitor? Where is your archaeologist? None on site. Shut down. They left. That was the last time they ever touched their machines. Why? Because. Uncle Kalani and their words telling us this is what's necessary for any construction on the mountain. Did it? Fibers being woven that I never noticed. Several months later, I would have to call it out right there and boom. And you know where I was at that moment? I wasn't there. Bonnie and I were in Germany. Wow. So Bonnie was recording. We didn't know any, none of us knew this was going to happen. So every night, me, Lanakila, and Ruth. We're on Facebook Messenger. What are we gonna do tomorrow? This is what you're gonna do tomorrow. Just hold them till I get home. That's the way we ran that beginning. On oh, Facebook Messenger from Germany to the Mauna. And Havani recorded it's everything from her CD in her tears because she wasn't with Lanakila. Because them two gotta be, you know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but from those early days, I can remember probably the first week and a half was only the two, two to four of us on the mountain on our own, holding this space and pleading with the Lahui, trying to forget the algorithm. <laughs> let's go, Kanaka, let's go. How can we speak of these sacred places and then just wait to say, oh, it's so sad. Me and myself as a Kumu, I think about, I teach a Honaka, we're down slope of this mountain. How could I ever look at my children again? When I tell them the Mo'olelo of this sacred place, I teach them about the Apu, I teach them about the importance of the water, how important the Malaba Aina, do all How could I ever look at them and expect them to ever trust anything I say again? If when something like this is about to happen, I do not. I have to stand behind my own teachings because that's what I expect my kumus would expect them. That's why they instill it in us. Why do we learn these things? Not for the sake of knowledge. It's the thing I have an issue with a lot of these institutions. Recognizing knowledge for knowledge's sake. If it's not applicable, it ain't squat. You can flash your biggest degree at me, but if I look behind you and there's no actual work in the community happening, wahawali. And so for many of us, the aha is also the continuation of what we know because our DNA has been speaking. Our EV has been speaking to us. And I'm not only talking about us Maori, because for all of us and all of our mixed ancestries, 
you go back to that point and we all had our sacred mountain. We all had our sacred walk. We identify, we identify ourselves with our own land base. Because that's the land base that shaped us, that formed us. So AHA today is why do we do these different chants? Why are we doing Aikamomo? Why are we doing Kukulu Kapak? Why do we do Mauna Tea Kuati? Why are, do we use these different chants? Each one of them in themselves is their own mo'olelo that speak to their own archetypal image that invoke their own particular mana that we're choosing to tap, select. Mauna Kia Kuahibi is literally the description of the ecology of Mauna Wakia through identifying with the Bahine Noho Mauna. Boliahu, Lilinoi, Waiyau, Kahopo Kani, Lihau, all these goddesses of the mountain that we know. Mo'o Inanea, Ki Pu'upu'u, Kuauli, all these are Kua. Vahine, Kua Bahine, nurturing, mothering. Ice, snow, frost, hail, mist. Oh, what do we get in common? Life. Eanoka hydrology o Mauna Awakea. <laughs> this is the scientific observation of our kupuna for thousands of years, understanding that all these different movements of the body. Kahopo yeah? Kane is the thunder and the lightning, but also she's the subterranean waters. The highest, what is the high, anyone know the, what is the highest spring in all of Oceania? Highest spring. Kohokohane Spring, 11,000 foot elevation. <laughs> Today, tapped by the US military every single time you flush a toilet at that uh, Mauna Kea Park, there is the sacred waters of Kohokohane. <clears throat> and we drive through that saddle and we see these barren mountainsides that was plentiful with mud. Here, the Moholelo, it speaks of the Mamani, describes the great Mamani forest, the Hina Hina, the, the silver carpets yeah, of the Hina Hina, the silver swords. All these plants that were very vibrant and alive and thriving. We do these Moholelo, we chant these chants, so they were bringing the images of a healthy Mauna to the forefront. We see it, we understand it, we become it. We chant our pilina. Oh, Hana Kamauna Kia, Puai Kamauna Nawakia, Owakia Kekanu Kokovalinu Kavahine, Hana Hoku Hevahine, Hana Halo Heali. That short pauku of that longer chant is literally describing our familial relationship to this mountain, to the cosmos, through the La'au that is literally our, our kin, which is Haloa and Aini. That we are not. You know, not a disgusting, I get it, a word I get disgusted right now, this is natural resources. I don't speak of my elders as natural resources. We have a different relationship. So if we look at that, we're bringing to the forefront of our mind, why are we standing for this mountain? On all the way to the level of how I would stand to protect my flesh and blood human family, I stand the same way or sometimes even more because that, this aina is what sustains my life. Why are we chanting Aikamomo? How come we doing Pele and Mauna Kea? Da, da, da. You want to know? Yes. You see the pahu? Do you see the skirt on the bottom of Mauna Kea? Oh, that pahoi hoi? That is the Pele. The body of the Nugget capital P and small p Pele, right? Anyone know what the Hawaiian word is for magma? It's not lava, right? <laughs> L-A-V-A. It's Pele. So we know of the Pele, the description of the Pele is also the description of the Ahua Vahine Pele. It's Pele ka Vahine who had Hakakawa with Poliahu at one time. Not necessarily, we're not talking about that Ahua in that particular time, but we're talking about the, the, the geological feature that is the mountain that is, guess what, it's Pele. And that mountain is formed, and these 
amazing features that we are standing to protect. Yeah? The dike systems within the mountain that hold, you know, Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa are actually registered ice mountains. In the mountain is permafrost. The shelving within the Pahoehoe plates of the mountain holds frost, holds that cold, and is able to capture that water and funnel it down through the greatest filtration system that we cannot supervise. And then stores it in that great basin, which is Kanaloa, what they call it, aquifer. That's a Kanaloa. Captured from the Vayakane, permeating through the mountain, filling that great Meke that is Kanaloa which we must stand for because right here drilling into it and boom boom in it is Pohakuloa <coughs> next slide our aha is invoking these images because what we're calling for Aikamumu is about transformation Aikamumu is about drastic change not slow butterfly metamorphosis Aikamumu calls for drastic, like beautiful green forest here, next morning volcano, boom, and then parking lot, oh, hoi, hoi. that's drastic. Flatlands here, two days later after the eruption, whole mountain, holy moly, you gotta come up with a new name. That's Kulihia. Kulihia kabauna vela ikia hia kabai. The transformation that we're speaking to for Mauna Kea is us. We needed to drastically change our sleepiness. We need to be woken up to the reality of what happens when we stay in slumber. When, you know, as Kanaka, we are very humble people, but we must not let ourselves be humbled out of existence. Sometimes we, oh, 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 oh. and then as we're doing this, Someone else is just stepping in and going, boom. Okay. There is a way that we can absolutely stand ikaika and strong. We don't need to be hanaino kai. And this is still very ha'a ha'a to stay here. I don't have to be that in. That's why, what's our word for pride? Ha'a hill. Keyword ha'a ha'a. We know humility. That's how we know how we can be hill. Too. Not just, you know, this kind of hail. We have stuck up with that balance. So we still stand strong, and as we say, do not, we go quote Tita, do not mistake our aloha for weakness, for we are fierce in our love for our land and each other. But that fierceness is absolutely beautiful. As this beautiful continue uh, the, these exhibits continue to show the beauty of our people while standing defiant <laughs> be sexy doing it too I tell you yeah you know, maybe I end with the sexy because that's why we always have kula ma'i the ma'i is all about I mean all this friction and all this action all gotta something gotta go on from that <laughs> yeah what do we want to see happen that's where we are today. We have to have a vision beyond this. We have to visualize beyond stopping something. That has been the trigger, yes, but we gotta think beyond that, okay? Because if we only gonna stop this, and we ain't got no plan after, something else is gonna fill that void. You know, as Kanaka said, you dig puka, you don't leave it open. You, we have to fill that void with our own visions, okay? That, that's, a, that's a hard thing for us that we, because we are always having to fight to fight. We have to, that's important. But sometimes we have become overwhelmed with the fights that we're not getting to be the dreamers, the creators. So we have to get to that next step where we have to be doing the two at once. Yeah. Um, so I would say in a, in a way, we have, let's watch the time. Development of where we are for a number of different things. Our petition, for Mauna Kea is nearing the 500,000 mark. Huh? Ready for an action. Ready for an action. We're nearing it. 500,000 and boom. Yeah. Oh Ready for the Betty Foundation. Watch out. We're coming. So we have to sign the petition. Bordelais. And as we know right now, one of the, the only things that, that 
Japan is keeping TMT in the game right now is they're clinging to hope with uh, National Science Foundation funding. National Science Foundation made their announcement. They're only going to choose one telescope to fund. It's either the Giant Magellan in Portugal, Chile, 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 Chile. yeah, or the TMT. So one, they go start scrapping because <laughs> they're going to fight for the same money. So, we need to ensure that NSF knows that if they invest on this one, they throw the money away. So if you filled out that form builder that was out there and you said, ah, ole, thank you very much. Section 106 workshops will be coming up if you signed up to be, say, I need to be consulted. I'm not, we're not going to leave you with not knowing how to do that. So just know that that's coming up as well because exhibit is only one thing we do. You know, we have to do all the things. So make sure you know that we, we're not leaving you not knowing how to do something. We will follow through. Knowing, well, having that, uh, being ready to know that that is what's on the horizon here. We are looking perhaps a few more actions that we should take and amplify and rally so that we can send a strong message, a uh, visual, no, something toward NSF, like you put your money there, we be here. You can come back all you want, because you know, 2014 was when big, uh, 15 was a big stand. The big, the big, big stand had like 700 people. <laughs> Little did we know, come back 2019, on a small day we had 7,000. What do you think gonna happen? They come back again. They think because right now we all busy. Yeah, we gotta respond to every one of their little posts they put out there or whatever. So they think that, oh, see, there's not that much support anymore for Mauna Kea. <laughs> we just gotta let them know, we are absolutely still here. And we ready to move. So, along with that, uh, I'll take a, a quick moment just to speak to as well. The other thing, of course, if you uh, know that is that we have achieved in one in one other realm um, the establishment of the Mauna Kea Stewardship and Oversight Authority that was formed by uh, a, 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 what do you call it? A bill that was put forth by the House. Um, in 2022, uh, I myself was part of that group, um, and we got it passed. That was shocking. We had no idea they were going to pass it, but they did. And it was always that. There's always that game of if we ain't in there to, to represent, who gonna step in there and what they gonna represent? So it's always that double-edged sword that we gotta play. I have been. I was. I, I am on the board right now. Um, I just got reappointed, so I get three years solid. They can't touch me, so get ready to make a rocket now. I had to be a little bit quiet because I only had one year, and I, you know, I had like, you know, like, dang, I gotta go for reappointment. They moved me out for the meeting. But now I reappointed, they can't touch me now. Yeah. <laughs> Where did we hear about these reappointments? The reappointments. I never heard nothing about them. You know, I will say too, something's going on with the algorithm. Because I yes. post yes. like crazy, and I, where I used to get four, five hundred likes in a couple days. I get like two. Me too. I haven't seen you stuff. See? I don't get nothing. Because you're a power spam too. That's what they're... Yeah, I'm kind of big in that too, so I'm totally like shadow banned for that. <laughs> so I'm going to be sending you guys direct, okay? And then you guys will animate out. Um, but I do encourage, I will, I'll, I'll share um, out to a number of you all and, and please share it outwards too. The Mauna Kea Authority we have formed uh, for, for more direct communication. We have created a Facebook page. We have created a website. Um, I know it was very contentious in the beginning. or It still could be contentious. Yeah? It is something under the state. Okay? We know that. We know that. It's under the state. Okay? And there's some things that I would say like, bro, I would try for rock certain things. But you know, some other agencies that's supposed to represent us never step up. And so... We're under the DLNR right now. Well, let me rephrase that. We're not under the DLNR. The office right now is just hell. This is how it works. We're in the boring phase. 
for the next four years, we're just creating an office. Like literally, we have one employee, right? Oh, we just got a second. Our first employee was Pua Anna. You guys know Pua Anna on? Hi, right away. Yes. Yeah, he's our secretary. Yeah. Hi. Like we're in that boring stage. Like we got like we gotta create the office and the policies and the da, 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 da. is and also working within the state system is absolute bureaucratic hell. It's slow as crazy, ridiculous. But to get one reimbursement for one flight takes seven months. It's so ancient, I still gotta turn everything in by Peppa ticket and black or blue ink, ink um, um, ink. I was like, serious? <laughs> That's how ancient our, the system is. So ex explanation for a lot of things in Hawaii that we're dealing with is the system is absolutely archaic. Okay? And so as we're establishing this office, just to know, so uh, some strong Kanaka who's on the board right now, there's myself, Auntie Pomai Bertelman, uh, Auntie Noi Noi Wong Wilson, uh, Dr. Kalehua Kirk, uh, Kamana Beamer is on for now. He is going to be stepping down later just for his own, just, Got a lot of stuff on his plate. Um, what am I gonna say? What? Oh, Neil Hannes. Neil Hannes is who's actually gonna be taking uh, Dr. Kamana's space. Um, so there's some strong Panaka advocates here, okay? And so here's the thing, and I've realized too, it's only gonna work for us. If we engage it, if we don't engage it, it's going to be like Oha. If we leave it to its own demise, it's going to become its own monster. So, um, one of the first things that we've been pushing and we're finally getting off the table, we've had our first two community talk stories. Um, and that's our goal. We're trying to regularly get out into the community. And my goal, one of my personal uh, goals, is to ensure that the, the authority is under the primary stewardship of the, of the Lahui. That means Olahui, when we say come, you need a story, come, you gotta come. Okay, you gotta come. Okay? If not, then, you know, there's some things, if we're gonna go out for that, we cannot be standing by ourselves, okay? Um, and so, in a nutshell, we have successfully, we will be, the University of Hawaii, by 2028, will no longer have control of Mauna Kea. Oh, that is okay. done. So we're in the current state of co-management as we are building the office, it's to phase out the University of Hawaii. One thing I'm working on very hard is to making sure that it doesn't just transform into a status quo. Oh, this is how we're doing it, so we're just gonna adopt the process. <laughs> Did the process work? No, then we're changing it, okay? We're not here for continue what never worked. If you ever, if you see some of our board meetings, I'm the one that I say that a lot. <laughs> yeah. This, this remember, it's never stopped by some good graces of one of, uh, of the of the house. No, no, no. It, we said something gotta change. Yeah. So, with that, as a as a board, as a as a, as a working board, the mission and the, one of the strongest principles that we have for us as well, who stand for the Mauna and Ke'i Mauna, is that it is within the creation document of this board. The mountain is the pinnacle. The mountain is the number one. Everything else is secondary to the health and well-being of the mountain. So in that, my role representing as a, as a cultural practitioner is to uphold and where I'm able to pull some strength right now is to speak directly to our cultural practices, our cultural, I don't like to say beliefs purely, beliefs and knowledge of, how our, of our mountain environment and, and spirituality and especially points that follow directly parallel, and I say are supported by the laws of conservation. One of the strongest things that we've seen the mismanaging the mountain prior was where we see laws of conservation simply, um, what you call, bypass prior. No enforcement of conservation. We're gonna enforce conservation to the highest degree, which directly falls in alignment with our traditions as Kanaka Maori, that this mountain is to be protected. That is what makes it kip. So, it is a development process and that which that it's gonna take a lot of us continuing to participate, engage, listen, and this is eventually too, like, granted to whatever NSF and all that happens. By the time that even happened to, they're gonna to have to come to us now. University is out. 
fact, they're banned. They're not allowed to even discuss anything when it comes to lease extensions or anything. Because they are out. So, in fact, there's right now, the big power struggle with us is they're trying to say, well, we have prior, prior um, contracts and such. And we're like, so that's your contract, but you're done. So that's where we are right now. So um, in this process, understand, it, it is a transition of power that's happening right now. Uh, and, and as we're doing this, our goal is to get the communication lines open with, our, with, our, with us as a collective Lahui to start collectively bringing together our visions. So it is it uh, some of, my, I will just speak to myself, what I'm engaging in now is as we do our community talk stories, start gathering and having those talk story community meetings of how do we see the care of our mountain from this day forward. Uh, also glad to announce the CSO telescope dome is almost completely removed. The first telescope is almost gone. Um, we are we are looking to and eventually now too they're going to be getting down to the foundation um, of the first of this telescope removal. The Hokukea telescope is on schedule to be removed by the end of the year as well. So two telescopes down and new more going up as far as I can. So in this the aha, this is the continued repetitious prayer in action. The aha that we dance and we chant. How do you test the measurement of the, the, the measurement of any ceremony? How do you know your ceremony worked? Well, you gotta look at what you've been praying for, and if there's no change, then you better change your ceremony. We have definitely seen change in us as a people, in our consciousness as community. And now to an opportunity. I'm, not, I'm definitely also going to say the board is not all eggs in one basket. It's only one other thing we, we, can, we can work on. Simultaneously keep everything else going at the same time. All fronts. Okay? But here's another thing that I know I'm working in so I can speak to you all on that. But this is the result of us. This is because we collectively move together. This is a form of pulikia. Yeah? We ask for all those things oppressive to come down and then something else to rise up, right? Okay, what does that mean? If we're gonna bring this down, what do we have to bring up? That's the kukulu. That's what we must kukulu. That's what we must construct and have those really hard conversations about how we go malama Hawaii at this point on. So we're, I'm excited and we should be excited that we can have an opportunity to start let's get together and stand for what we want <coughs> yeah it's that day where we just get together for stand for what we want and not necessarily always have to be against yeah but we already know that because we want our mauna safe that's number one safe mauna safe kana so with that weaving all this in so oh my god that's political i want to get into my into my ceremony this is what our ceremony for too. <laughs> ceremony is to move the current to assist us in all the realms. So, nui kamahalo yakako of how we see the continued reverberations and we continue to resound and now we aku send that vibration across the Honua. And now, I mean, just, just think about it. You know, you ain't here. Now look, 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 look. <laughs> <laughs> So, how many of you need a review on just something? This AHA hasn't been done for a while here, am I right? So, it's like he said, you know, you might know one. So we want to be comfortable about this. So we have a camera and as we did on the Mauna, if you didn't want to be in the film on the camera, we said because you were new at this and you didn't want to show yourself up trying to do something, we will make sure that you're in a place where the camera is not on you. Because if we're going to film the AHA, which we might say we don't want to today, maybe we just want to have us. Or if we don't mind, 
and you say, well, I'm not comfortable because I haven't done it in a long time. I might not get any of the motions right. I'm just trying. We might say, well, the camera's not going to go right here. But not everybody go there, you know. But, you know, but, but we did that on the Mauna and we honor that everywhere we go. We are not here to put our Lahui on the spot. Because this is real for us. This is real for us. So, why don't we kui luna and just, let's just get ready. We know we're going to blow the pool. Let's get familiar. We know we're going to blow the pool. We know we're going to do a home mai. Might even do a kani huala Kani huala ni e. We're going to go right over there and pick up the yard. And yeah, we go right in the yard. Yeah, yeah now makua and a home mai. And we're gonna do. Okay. 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 that way. Okay. Okay. So Mauna that way. Oh, perfect. We go on the yard and we'll go okay. that way. So we know we're gonna do those pule. Then we're gonna say, what are we comfortable with? We're comfortable with Lanakila standing in front of us and doing Ohanao Kamauna. Never mind, no more pahu. We're just gonna Ohanao. So long. What you rather? Him on the pahu or him in front of you? Probably him in front of you this time until we get more ma'a, you know? So we have Lanakila in the front for Ohanao Kamauna. How many of you are kind of familiar with um, Mauna Kea Kuahivi, where you say, I think I get that one? Oh, uh, oh <laughs> right here. So we make sure that we're carrying each other on this one. So we're going to do Mauna Kea Kuahivi and we're going to do Ohanao Kamauna. Then I think we're going to do Hulihia Kamauna because, you know, that is kind of ingrained. So we'll be all right there. And then if that goes straight into Kukulu Kapahu, we can do that. And then we do our Kukulu. There's a, is that a request? Can you know because this is your ahu, your aha, you know? Au aia. There's a call for au aia. Perfect. See, we, we get them, you see? So let's step over here because I think we're going to be behind Lanakila. And we'll move our mail, our ukana. Uh, I'm gonna if tell they, them, yeah. If they wanna, if they wanna shoot it at all. Okay, I'll ask that. So if you don't wanna be on camera, I'm gonna. I say to her, you know. How you? On this side. Okay, so everybody, I'm gonna ask one more thing. If you, if you're not comfortable with being on camera, just go this side. The, the sidewalk. Sidewalk, and you know, just right over there. And we promise we will not have you on film because the rules on the Mauna is the same rules here. But I think you're going to need a little bit of room between you guys. You cannot cuddle. No cuddling. Okay, so we're not going to go from over there. Are you guys good with that? Where he's going right down the line? And you can even go in that other yard too. It's fine. Because look at us, you know, could have been only three of us. Do they need more room? Do they need more room? Because you have to go in the back? I think they're good. You just stay right here. Okay. I'll cut the next picture. 
And if not done, and jump on the camera. I am the camera. Okay, everybody, we're going to get ready. So looking forward, if you are on the Alahulu Kukuna right now and we called you to come forward, that's how we want you to come forward. We are on the Mauna. The Mauna is here. And we know the Mauna is all around us today because every place you look, the Mauna is here. Right? I mean, look around you. Every place you look, the mountain is here. So you are dancing for the Mauna in the presence of the Mauna in every photograph, in every treasured item that you saw today. Every kupuna who stood, whose name is still there, who got arrested, every kia'i and kukulu and kako'o who was ever anywhere for Mauna Kea. We are right in the center of it today. We are right here. So let's settle in because let's go with Oh, <laughs> 
berapa berapa ya Oh, 
não, que mão na que é o cu, aí, que mão na que é o vá, que é que carne, o pouco valendo, tá barrindo, ah não, oh, é barrindo, ah não, ralo, ah ali, ah não, que mão na, é que que mão na na que é, vai! Oh, ah não, que mão na que é, oh, ah não, que mão na que é,
Keep it on So allow this transformation to set the and let the past execute. Or one moment to that in the aha. Some people say something that broke the aha. Mm -hmm. Never broke the aha. Some ducks of aspect of aha. The silence, the move that went across the Honua, we had those systems come down. It was a planetary shutdown. Remember why we left them out? Well, we never left them. So we never need them. In that time of Maui, Mayo, silencing the voice, silencing all the big bullshit, and we just went hoi hoi back to our homes and we sat still for a long time I know it's uncomfortable but did you see what happened to Aina? we saw Aina heal we saw animals returning to places they have not been but what you what you kind of right is when we just realize in our humility we not the gods sometimes we just need to step back and allow the Aina to heal and then learn from that before we step back in. So, in that now, so that when we do come back in, we rethink how we do that. How do we bring forth knowledge and wisdom? Well, we have to make sure that we pull it out from the dark places of our memory, the ancestral wisdom. We need to reach deep. We need to reach far beyond our comfort and out idea. Make it steadfast. Make it pa'a. This aha banana or this pula banana, this prophecy chat of out idea that we do today, we invite you as well. It's one simple repetitive motion. Okay. I'm going to share this one mana'o that one kupuna shared with me from Nanapuli a long time ago. One image of this. He said, imagine it being, when you say it, how you can grab onto that knowledge. Imagine the great wave. When Kame, everything was Mali, our nice villages, our communities, everything, but then something came and went and just wrecked everything. Threw everything all about. Those of you holding onto the coconut tree, you're holding onto the roof of the house. But when that wave starts to descend, you are in that place of safety. Who can you grab? Grab that component. Grab that tradition. Tie it down. Make it pa. Grab this ike. Make it pa. But the further that wave pulls, you gotta reach a little bit further. Bring it up. Reach out further from that point, that moku that you hold. Reach out, grab as everything that you can. Bring it back to make it steadfast and this steadfast is that you make it live. At one point, our kupuna were able to capture a lot of our ikea knowledge and put them on the palapala pala maikai, but it doesn't live on the pepper. It doesn't live in the research. It lives through us doing. So here we have it. Now we have to bring it to life. So as we step back in, what do we want to bring from our collective ikea of our kupuna right here as we prepare to kukulu to build a new? Yola. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna do a little fast again. If you dance in a halal, this chant, as I would say often on the Mauna in Pula etiquette, you wouldn't even be learning this until you've been in halal for like a while. Because Hula Pahu is the last thing you learn in most traditional halal. But when we went on the Mauna, there was a need for these numbers to come up to hold on. And there was a need for us as Kumo to open our minds and our hearts and say, well, if I was at home, you wouldn't be learning this. But up here, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open. And we all said that, you know, all, right. all of us as Kumo. This number is done slightly different depending on which school you're from. So if you see people turning, if you see them grabbing, there are different styles for this. So feel comfortable to do this in the style that you learned it. 
So for us over here, if you haven't done it, we're gonna grab four times. Two, three, four. That's your out of motion. And of course, Somewhere. there would be an ami that goes with that. Okay, so for me, my next motion, all of us will do this. And you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna switch. So in, in my learning, I'm just gonna do this the whole time. Then I'm gonna go here. But if you see somebody else doing another motion, that's correct too. Then we're going to do three. One, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five. There would be that. You know, it's a hollow. One, two, three, four, five. Right. And your hand got to go boom, 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 boom. You know, like we're not playing around. Boom. Then we're going this side. One. <coughs> Two, three, and now we're going to hold it that way. Bum, 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 bum. You do five steps, and then we're going back here. And I think we're doing that six times. Yeah. And then we're going out up again. And the second time is a little lower and a little faster. So you don't like be all the way in your most aihaa for the first time. Well, for me, because second time, I gotta go lower. So I'm gauging my first time. So I'm right here. Second time, I can go here, you know? Because it is faster. And so your feet on your ami is a comfortable, you're not too widespread. You're not too close either. You're comfortable where you can ami. You see, ami. That's part of holding on because this chat really is about holding on and what you will do to somebody if they you follow the rules of the kind of fight. In the emu they go. In the emu. Okay, so that's what we're saying to them. You guys know follow the natural law of the kind of fight set up by the deities, not us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, I can't hold it no more. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, I can't hold it no more. Hold it here, Papi, oh, I love you, te alo. Hold it here, I can't hold it no more. Oh, kuka na kilo, hello. Oh, kahana, ana, hiki, oh, kahula, hula, kaya, kaali, a o poha kuku. Me ka u pena ua oi ua ni ani me ka u nu oni o la ni o la a o ke a be a i tu a i a la a i a o a i a e ka ma e ko na moku o ko na moku e ka ma he a a i a o ke ka ma ka ma ka ma ka ma e ka huli nu. Okay, come up, come up, Ay a aya na na i halape pe ta hono automo i haale ya e ke kiu velo o k 
Okay, so we're closing with what we did on the Mauna for nine months. Three times a day, every day. You ground it in the ending, the culmination. We said, what is it after all these dances that is gonna seal us? Who are we? And what are we here for? And we said, we are pillars. Us as humans last. The Mauna is the first pillar. The Ahu or the rocks that we make, like you saw maybe at the Arts Common. That is the Ahu, that is the Kukulu. The big Kohakus that stand on Mauna Kea, the sentinel, those are Kukulu. And then we, the Kanaka are the kukulu. So just to remind everybody, so you have the imagery. When we were on the Mauna on June 24th, 2015, we were linking arms. And this time, Lanakila wasn't there. You see how we trade off? <laughs> Lanakila was in Greece at the time. Because our work is not only here in Hawaii, our work is connecting the whole world. And we trust that Whoa. enough of us will be there, that we can stop anything, we can protect anything with all of us together. And with the deities and with the Aina itself and the water as one. So on that day, we, if you were there that day, we all got up really early in the morning. It was still dark. And we had slept over in our cars, in our vehicles, and all night long, all you could hear was trucks coming up, like our people. And we, we were just freezing. And Kapule and I were like shivering in our car, but we said, wow, another truck, another truck. And we just knew our people had answered the call. And that was just in the middle of the night kind of call. We never even make our big call out yet. So at sunrise, not even sunrise, still dark. We got together and fronting the Halipohaku Visitor Center. And we couldn't even see each other. It was so dark that we were just standing in this circle and we went over the lineup. What, were, what are we doing today? The police are coming. We're just people, teachers, grandmas, preschoolers. Many of us, for the first time, we're gonna face off with some kind of law enforcement. What are we gonna do? And we had a little drawing, um, we had a book, uh, like a composition book. Scenario one, scenario two. And we said, today we're going with scenario, stand in lines and link arms. Now, Kapu Aloha was not firmly established at that point, only by ceremonial people who have been doing Kapu Aloha forever in ceremony. That wasn't like a full on pa'a thing. So if you watch videos, which I hope you will, of June 24, 2015, you'll see what I mean. But we made our best attempt. Many people, we didn't even know them. And they had come up, they don't know who Pua Case is, you know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. They're not gonna automatically like, oh yeah, auntie, you know, but we did our best. We did our very best. So we got in our lines. And when I looked at the lines, what they reminded me of were kukulu, were pillars. And I said, as our people were lining up, I couldn't even believe the people I saw from my community who had never stood in a line before, were just saying, I'll be in this spot. I'll take this line. I'll go right here. And we had lines all the way up the mountain. And yes, they stopped at like line nine or 10 and made it through some of our lines and arrested people along the way. But we were in it, right? We were in it. Because that's where I first met Kauka Ohu, was in the lines, going up the mountain, he was in a car. And then Laurie was in the line next to me. So, you know, many of us met in these lines. 
and that's why we have relationships. Once you've been in a line together, you know, it's like, okay, this is a forever thing. But this chat right here came from those lines. So I just want to say, and even ena hoa aina, ena hoa velolike, those words came from 2015. What you were doing in 2019 with the ending chant, I have written that inspired by 2015. So I just want to, you know, just ground that chant in that day on the Mauna when our communities came and then we put the call out and people were flying in. They were just jumping on planes and flying over. And it was after that, that I formed Mauna Kea Education and Awareness. I had already quit school, but I formed it because a lot of people came and they didn't even know why they were coming. They're just like, oh, they put the call out, we better get over there. And that was amazing. But the knowledge about the Mauna and the stance and the cases, you never even need know that day, but you need to know now and you needed to know after that. So that's what grounds these next two chats. Pillars, standing, June 24th, 2015, arm in arm for the first time, getting arrested on the Allah, but holding. And all we heard at the end of the day was chi hu. As I walked down the mountain, I could hear the calls. I couldn't see anybody because it was so covered in fog and mist, but I could hear, and I said, oh my God, they're gonna turn around, you know? And I didn't even know it, but I could then turn right back up and walk up the mountain and tell all the other lines that we had victory that day. And that victory was sweet. And we still taste that victory of that day. And that's I share one, one thing more all out that too. And, um, especially to speak to our to Kukuna and to allies uh, where you can stand for so I, I wasn't there that day I was in Greece and Havani was Havani, in Greece. we were on a cultural exchange and it was like heavy because we, we were following it and they're like oh my god they actually said they're coming on this day and this time and it's 12 hours so 6 p.m. over there was 6 a.m. we knew the trucks was coming and we were like oh my god we're like they're trying to watch Facebook and uh. but I remember calling uh, or I was watching we were watching one of the videos and it was on the last line the last line the police got to the ninth line was right in the first curve and that they were stuck there for a long time and the camera was panning across and I see they're dancing oh, I, know, come out. I find later on that they had been dancing this for like two hours straight non-stop but the camera panned this way it all are people and they get this old holy lady and fans, that old holy lady is my mom. My mom, blonde hair, blue eyes in Colorado. I called my sister, I was like, Miley, where the hell are you? She's like, I'm at home. I was like, mom's on the mountain. <laughs> my mother is 70 years old at the time. My sister was like, no, you're not going. She wouldn't go up there in the middle of the night by herself and she would walk up there. My mom get a pacemaker, everything. And she found herself all the way up the line, she said, I called her, like, are you not? She goes, yeah. But her, <laughs> she said, black and yeah, blue. Yeah, they all were black and black blue. Black and blue. Right there, in the cold, in the mist, old holy lady. I said, mom, why did you do that? She goes, what? I love this mountain too. Yo. Just to speak to that, and all our allies as well. Mahalo Nui, yeah. and know that this aha has been aha before we called it aha. Okay, so all you're going to do on this one is clap with the Ami. One, two, three. One, two, then walk forward. Mauna. Two claps. One, two, three. One, two, Ahu. One, two, three, one, two, Hohaku. One, two, three, one, two, Kanaka. We'll do that 
three times because we said if we ever had to walk up the mountain in 2019, remember, we're going to hula up the mountain. And that's why I made it move like that. We're going to hula. Yeah, we're going to hula. Give so him this one. Give him this one. Give Okay, we good? Okay, everybody's hands up. I hear hala he kukulu pa. He hala he kukulu he mana. He hala he kukulu he ahu. He hala.
Kalima. Pai Kalima. Pai Kalima. Okay, because this is for all of your communities. Make sure you folks tell everybody that it's here because this is a tribute to your island, your kiai, your kukulu, your kako'o. This is for you folks. <laughs> And if anybody ever says why you gotta stand for Mauna Kea when you gotta stand for all kind of other things, because that chant says Mauna Kea is the sealant, mm. the beacon and the unifier. And for us to be able to do all the things that we do, we have to be unified by the Mauna. So no matter what, we stand for the Mauna, we stand for the highest water in the world that then will flow to all our Mokupuni we cannot not stand for the Mauna. It is the sealant that seals us all together. So that is an AO that was written by the ancient ones, not us. Okay, so we follow that Ike Kupuna. Oh, yeah. 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 